Chris and I are maxing out a hydraulic crushing machine. What about this? Is this what we're gonna use? We went to the Natural Resource Canada's CanMet Materials Laboratory, which is a federal research lab. Oh, this is good. Oh, look at that! Oh, could, is this what we're using? Uh, no, oh, I actually, can use this. Hold on, I'll, let me figure this maybe, out. Maybe later. What, really? It's, it's just over here. CMAT is the largest research centre in Canada dedicated to metals and materials research. Oh, this is it. This yeah, is it. All right! Hydraulic press! How much force does this apply? This can do two million pounds. That's over 900,000 kilograms. Which is about 20 cars. <laughs> Let's crush some stuff! Let's get some stuff. Oh, crushing! We gotta get the stuff. We gotta get the stuff. Okay. We started out with the piece of wood which defeated our last press. And go! Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I love that sound. Reversing. It turned our wood into a pancake. Whoa, totally flatten. So it was time to try some other stuff. We crushed a ball of plasticine. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that is neat. You sort of made a rainbow. Yeah. Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Yes, it is now a solid plate of aluminum. <laughs> and a basketball. Basketball. Good thing we got these earplugs in because when it pops, it'll be loud. What? Never mind. Oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this hydraulic press was so maxed out, we had to think of the toughest stuff to crush. We crushed hockey pucks, a safe, <laughs> we crushed a hydraulic jack with the hydraulic press. Whoa. This is a metal vice. Hard, strong. Yeah, it's steel. Heavy steel. Whoa, look at it bend. A bowling ball. <laughs> it totally exploded. <laughs> Science Max experiments at large. Hydraulics. Whoa. Nicely done. So fun. I should reverse it and we should start cleaning all that stuff up, yeah, huh? I think so. Okay, reverse. Silita and I got our maxed out spinning top to work pretty well. The only thing left to do was to ride it. We attached a large disc and a Lazy Susan. That's a platform that spins around on ball bearings. Lazy Susan on top. Lazy Susan. So then you can ride on it. Yes, and then we wanted to add this extra bit. Now, why did we want to add this? We need a little bit more um, weight on our top. Okay, so who gets to ride it? Um, I feel like you should ride it. I think you might be because right. Because I want to use oh, the drill. The super awesome maxed out drill. Okay, so let's do it. First thing I should say is do not, do not try this at home. We are trained scientists. Silita uses the drill to get it spinning while I hold it steady. Then I hold on to our safety line above and carefully rest my weight on the top. It works, but not for long. We take turns trying it out, but it seems we have another part of science working against us. Good old friction. Friction with the air and with the ground is what eventually slows the spinning top down. But our weight on the ball bearings of the Lazy Susan really increases the friction. More friction means the top slows down a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. It was kind of terrifying, right? <laughs> yeah. Good old Newton's first law kept the top spinning, angular momentum kept it from falling over, and friction slowed it back down. The forces were always the same, no matter if it was a little top, a maxed out top, or a rideable one. There you go, Science Max. Experiments at large, giant spinning top. That's a spinning. That's as large a spinning top as I think you. I think ever... in the entire world. Let's do it again. Yeah! Buoyancy 
buoyancy is the tendency for things to float. Things like this balloon or this ball in water. But it doesn't float on its own. But it doesn't float on its own. The helium is less dense than the air molecules around it. And they fall past the balloon and push it up. The ball is less dense than the water around it. So the water molecules flow around the ball and push it up. This happens because water is a fluid. The particles flow around each other. This works because air is a fluid. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, air isn't a fluid, but it is. Usually we think of fluid as meaning a liquid, but in this case, fluid means anything where the particles can flow around each other, and that includes air. But you know what? It's hard to see the particles in water. Same thing with air. I can say it, but it's really hard to see it. Now, um, yeah. Now this is sand, and it behaves like a fluid too. Well, sort of, check it out. Look, it's made of a whole bunch of very fine particles, and it takes the shape of its container. But watch this. I put a ball in the sand, and it doesn't float. Now the ball is less dense than the sand, but it doesn't float because the particles of sand have a little bit too much friction right now. But watch as we move them around and reduce the friction by adding some air. Now, the sand is behaving like a fluid, and the ball floats. Let's see what else floats on sand. How about this pumpkin? Yup, that floats. How about this block of wood? Yup, that floats too. How about this styrofoam ball? Yeah, that definitely floats. Look at that. The sand is a fluid right now because all of the little particles of sand are moving around. But watch this, if I turn off the air, everything freezes in place. Nothing floats anymore because the sand is no longer behaving like a fluid. So there you go, buoyancy. It all depends on the density of the thing and the fluid it's surrounded by. Huh? Science. You want the best material around? Well, you come to the right place. I've got them all. I got you Flubberoid. Magnoplex. Flexoweed. Pastotherm. Bloopifo. You need hydrogelatinous substrate? I got it. But you know all those fancy materials are nothing compared to the good old fashioned spider web. Huh? It, hey, where's Gary? Ramona, Gary got away again. You know, people ask me, Sal, is it true spider webs are stronger than steel? And I tell them, it depends. When you look at a rope or a thread or a fiber, you talk about its tensile strength or its ability to withstand force before breaking. <laughs> uh, uh. But you're comparing different things, so you have to compare them by thickness. So if you're comparing a steel cable to a spider web of the same thickness, then yes, steel is stronger. But spider web is six times lighter than steel. So if you are measuring strength to weight, spider web wins every time. Gary! So we build more things with spider web. Well, for one thing, it's sticky and difficult to work with. Almost finished knitting the spider web sweater. It's only gonna take me about 80 more hours. And it's not easy to train spiders. Okay, Steven, one long, non-sticky thread and you get a cookie, okay? And, hey, uh, where's Marco? And Petunia. Huh. But no need to train spiders now because modern science has surpassed the spider web. Enter carbon nanotubes. Huh? This thread doesn't look like much, but it is made of tiny little tubes made of carbon atoms. Think of them like a straw. But a really long straw. Carbon nanotubes are incredibly light and strong. Remember when we compared strength to weight? Well, steel is heavy. Spiderweb is about six times stronger by weight, and carbon nanotube is about 50 times stronger than that. That's so 
Great. So why aren't we making everything out of carbon nanotubes? I'm gonna knit a carbon nanotube sweater. Well, first we have to make them cheaply enough to be affordable. There you go. One carbon nanotube sweater. $480,000. But material scientists all over the world are hard at work trying to find ways to make carbon nanotubes faster and cheaper. And soon, they'll be everywhere. And then spiders can go back to spinning their webs in peace. There you are, Gary. Where, where's everybody else? With Petunia and Marco and... What do you mean they're in my jacket? <laughs>